All right, good. Uh, I'm with Eric at uh, Ellocraft at the Dayton Ham Venture 2022. We're going to get updates on the K4. Yeah. The K4. We're Very shipping. cool. We're actually shipping them. You're actually si yeah. shipping yeah. them now. Yeah. <laughs> good. So my most popular video from Dayton 2019 was the K4. The release, the oh, debut the release of the K4. So it was very good. So yeah. So okay, tell us about. I'm going to give you this. You can click this on your uh, shirt there. Okay. Which one? The bottom one? No, yeah, the bottom one. Right, right there. Well, there we go. Okay, give me a second. Yep. So I'm Eric WA6HHQ with Ellacraft, and a couple of big differences from the last time we showed you guys K4s in 2019 is we're actually shipping them now. We've been shipping them for about the last 12 to 18 months since we ramped up. We managed to survive COVID and actually get things into production. That's been quite a, quite a challenge. Thanks a lot to you guys too for hanging in there with yeah. us. But the uh, the key thing is they're going out the door. They're continuing to go out, and we're uh, we're catching up with our backlog, which is really good. good. So uh, it's been a great response with the guys that have them out there. Just going to show a couple of new things that were maybe not fully developed or also new, just brand new on the radio. One of which is we've implemented uh, constant envelope single sideband compression, and this is a uh, W9GR. Um, did a QEX article a number of years back that talked about the algorithm behind this, and we've implemented that in software in our DSP. What that allows you to do is to run compression at higher levels without all the in-band, as much in-band distortion. So you can actually get a, a much higher compression ratio in terms of more average, higher average power. So, because all voices, when you're talking, have a whole range of stuff. And I'll show that to you off the transmit monitor I've got over here. I've got a P3 pan adapter. Now, I'm just using it as a actual uh, transmit monitor. And I'll, I'll bring it up here and I'll just talk normally into it with no compression so you can look at, keep it on the screen there. Right. Um, so basically I'm looking at the, uh, at the transmit envelope here. You bring it back on that, if you got that in there. And as I'm talking, as you can tell, if I go hello, you'll see the peaks, hello. You have high peaks might be at whatever your power is set to, 50, 100 watts. But the overall average power is quite low over on that. And you can see even on the watt meter there, the average level, we have a peak reading watt meter. But the uh, average level, you know, it's bouncing around quite a bit. But the peak might hit a you know, higher power, but, not, but the average is down as I talk. But if I start turning compression up here, it's a little dial on this guy. You, and you watch the screen there again. I'll, I'll do it as I just go, hello, you can see the change to it. Uh, as I go up higher, uh, you know, it's the, both the average power. And you can see that we're filling up the whole waveform a lot more. What's nice is it's actually uh, not squared off edges at the top. See there, you can see it's sort of rounded on the peak. So the in-band distortion is actually much more pleasing. Yes, you can tell you're compressed, but it's not at the typical level of straight RF clipping compression where it, where it sounds uh, a little bit harsh as you get to the higher levels. So the net benefit is it's, it's a huge increase in talk power we've seen uh, and from no compression to uh, running compression you know, up to about uh, 7 to 8 dB of actual increase. So I'll switch off that there because they don't need to have me talking in the microphone the whole time. That's okay. But that's, uh, that's in our latest software release, actually, that uh, customers have beta release on there out there. They'll be in the production release here pretty quick also. Uh, the other key thing we've done, um, now we've got the K4 out there, we're integrating the remote control stuff a lot more. So we're going to be putting out for the uh, waterfall display, and I'll show you actually here as an HDMI flat monitor on top of the radio. This happens to be a touchscreen one off of Amazon. Uh, from, there's a bunch of different companies that sell them for a couple hundred bucks, 250 and it uh, takes HDMI from the uh, radio as uh, actually touchscreen back and it feeds it back just like a mouse would be so I can tune the radio. You can see the frequency changing there. And you can tune around and, and so on. But also, um, they can be on a big monitor too. It supports up to 4K sure. monitors. Sure. And uh, what's really cool now is we can actually, we're, get, we're bringing out a protocol where, and it'll be open protocol for people to use to stream both uh, pan adapter data and also the uh, receive audio and, and transmit audio coming back the other way um, for the K4 for remote control. For like other people to write, to integrate to their things like into Win for K3 or into um, like the pan adapter into uh, N1MM or other logging programs, contest programs, and so on. So that's going to go public. But that also ties in with our remote stuff. Just to show you what I've got going here is I've got a, uh, this is an engineering unit and it's in a larger case than the final one. This is a basically a K4 Mini. It's going to be a front panel. It has a basically a single board computer in here, and it will be, oh, maybe three, four inches deep, roughly, in the final like, packaging. Like the K3 Mini. Like the K3 Mini. Right. Yeah, so basically it's a remote control head. Mm -hmm. This, of course, the difference is the K3 Mini had to go through an external box like the remote rig boxes or right. a computer to talk to it. This one, you can come directly out the Ethernet out the back, okay. and we'll give you a way to connect to the, uh, the host K4 like I have running over here. Okay. So basically, I've got this running, and it's actually, you see it, running here, but basically it's tied together to the K4 to my left. Mm -hmm. That's the host over here. 
and if I change one, it shows up instantly. If I leave it on this one on the right, Jason, I'll just yeah. change the VFO on the host K4. You can see how fast it's updating on the remote control head and vice versa and so on. So it's very fast. So is there, is there any lag? I mean, you're on the same local area network right now. Yeah. If you're going over the internet, is there any lag for that? Um, it depends really what your internet connection is and what the yeah, latency yeah. is on that, yeah. but actually it's pretty darn fast. Okay. Um, okay. We, uh, we can update that very quickly. And yeah. the waterfall, uh, we're going to, for the guys that are uh, network guys, they'll understand this. Uh, internally, we've been doing it at TCP IP, which has a fair amount of overhead. Sure. But if you're just looking at visual stuff, a small dropout, isn't really a visual event for you. So you can go to UDP, which is just mm -hmm. setting the stuff saying, here it comes, right? Mm -hmm. And we'll be doing that for both the audio and the uh, and the speech, and, and the, the, the pan adapter stuff to uh, to allow that to, to go through. So this is really cool. It gives you a full, exact same front panel. Mm -hmm. It'll have Ethernet interface, of course, the usual microphone, headphone, yeah. um, even a computer control, so you can hook up locally to your logging laptop. Mm -hmm. So it's just like it's a good radio next to you. It just happens to have a real long extension cord, <laughs> yeah, or mic yeah. cord, going to the yeah. other radios. Yeah. So this, those are mainly the new things right going on right now. Obviously, uh, it's K4, K4D are going out the door right now, have been for some time. K4D is our biggest seller on that. That's, is that the 200-watt uh, model? No, uh, it's a 100-watt model, but the K4D has two analog to digital converters. So you can have two separate antennas coming in. Okay. And on different bands, different frequencies, or on the same frequency if you want to do diversity reception where you're losing with two antennas. Right. And that's a, that's a big advantage. That's the most popular one. We can also, K4, the basic one, has one analog to digital converter but we can see so much bandwidth, we can still listen on one antenna to two frequencies, so you, like, you can listen to the other side of a pile up, things like that. So it's, very, it's still very useful that way. And plus you can upgrade to one to the other by adding boards to it, so it makes it, makes it cool. But uh, you know, we're getting them out the door, we're basically still backlogged on it, um, but we've taken it down from that huge backlog going back to 2019, Dayton, um, to you know, six months roughly right now. Plus or minus what our friends in the semiconductor industry are gonna delay parts to us, which we, as you know, logistics deliveries, everything from aluminum to everything else is stuck on ships in Long Beach Harbor, or chips just disappear from the distributors, and we're hunting them down out there and getting, you know, we've been dodging and weaving and sometimes redesigning small portions of boards to accommodate different parts. Everybody's going, everybody in ham radio and other places are going through this right now. So far we've been able to bob and weave, and I have a reasonable buffer of parts, so I usually have time to react, but it, it's, it's quite a challenge. That might, might get a little faster, it might get a little slower, but, but we'll keep people updated with what we're doing. Ellacraft.com. Ellacraft.com. You got us. Thanks a lot. Cool, man. Thanks. Thanks for the time today. Appreciate okay. it.